ministry of the Calvary Baptist Church. This is Countdown to Courage. We want to welcome you aboard today. It's September the 13th, Tuesday, September the 13th, 2022. Hope you're having a great day today. It's good to see you coming aboard, and uh, we could not be more excited about having you watching today and listening, and we're hoping that we can do or say something that would honor our wonderful, wonderful Savior and something also that would be a blessing to your life today. I know that folks are needing encouragement today in a big, big way, and so I hope the countdown will serve as an encouragement in your life today, and it'll just um, motivate you to go out and do more for the cause of Jesus Christ. This is an outreach ministry of the Calvary Baptist Church of Union Grove, North Carolina. We're so excited about how the Lord is blessing all churches that are Bible-believing churches, but we are uh, also very excited about how God is blessing at Calvary. We had a great weekend. Hope you had a wonderful weekend wherever you attended, and I hope you did attend. Um, but we had a great weekend at Calvary, wonderful spirit, good crowds all day, great, just a, a, there was an electricity in the air, and enjoyed the music and the singing, uh, just incredible, and then of course, what a blessing it was to gather as the family of God around the Word of God, and what a powerful, powerful book that God has blessed us with, and we thank God and we praise God for that. Speaking of that book, if you want to go ahead and grab it right now, we're going to be going to Ephesians chapter number four here in just a moment. Now, if you're working or driving, of course, we understand you can't follow along, but uh, if you're uh, able to do that, it's always helpful to grab a copy of the Word of God. And so Ephesians chapter four is where we'll begin today. Also, please like and share uh, and and comment. We would love to, to recognize you on the air. We love to do that with our live audience at least as long as we can. Now, Hey, listen, we're glad to, again, glad to have you aboard today. Things are going to be just a little more spotty the next few days. My wife and I will be with you, Lord willing, will be with you tomorrow on the broadcast, and then my wife and I will be heading out of um, out of town, even out of state, for a few days to minister to another church and uh, try to be a blessing to them, and uh, we'll uh, roll back in here in time for our Sunday services and and so anyway, uh, we'll, we'll do what we can as far as countdown is concerned. I know that we are going to be tied up in ministry, and so we'll see what we can do. But we're going to be with you tomorrow for sure. So I hope you'll be back with us um, at 3 o'clock for countdown uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. In fact, let me take us to the split screen, if I could, and just make mention, of course, of our uh, services tomorrow evening. Now, we're going to be, have, going to be having question and answer uh, tomorrow evening at Calvary. This is something brand new that we've started in the year of two, 2022 and weren't, uh, w wasn't exactly sure how this would go, but you know, so far it has been such a blessing. And so we've not been able to do it now for probably over a month. And so we're excited. Tomorrow night we'll be meeting out in our fellowship hall uh, for a wonderful time together of food and fellowship. And then about the last 35 minutes or so, we'll organize into a question and answer time. And now we are working to try to get this available on the live stream. Um, I don't know that we're quite there yet, but we're working at it. So all of you folks that aren't a part of our Calvary family, uh, we do want to make this available, this question and answer, because it has been so helpful and so we're looking forward to Q&A tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, on the campus of the Calvary Baptist Church of Union Grove, North Carolina. Come prepare to have a wonderful meal, great time of fellowship, and uh, come and ask your question if you have one. That would be, that, that'll be great. Well, hey, listen, let's recognize those on the air today, and then we'll get right into Ephesians chapter 4 today. And it looks like we've got a good crowd on here today. We want to welcome Karen Hoppin. Hello, Karen. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for watching from Concord, North Carolina. There's Judy Connor. Hey, Judy. Good to see you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day in Statesville. 
And it's good to see you today, Judy. God bless you. <clears throat> Miss Almeida Campbell. Hey, Mel. Uh, Miss Almeida, good to see you today. Thank you for tuning in, probably from work, I'm guessing. And uh, it's great to have you on here today, Almeida. God bless you. There is uh, Donnie and Tamara Gilly. We want to welcome the Gillies aboard. And always a blessing to have the Gillies with us. There is uh, uh, there's the Hooks watching. Barry, Christine watching from Morganton, North Carolina. And uh, we want to welcome the Hooks aboard. There is my beautiful, beautiful little uh, redhead. And uh, our First Lady is uh, taking care of our other First Lady of our church. Uh, Miss Tammy is, uh, has, is taking Miss Marie Spies out. And they're doing some shopping today for some things. That Miss Marie was needing up, needing, needing, and so anyway, uh, we welcome Miss Tammy to the broadcast today. Maybe even Miss Marie, and so thank you guys for tuning in. It's good to see my little wife with us today. Uh, let's see. Let me look real fast. There's Ricky Bird. Hey, Ricky, welcome aboard. Good to see you today, Brother Lee Hoots. Hey, Lee, good to see you. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, let's see here, Keith Gilligan. Hey, Keith. Hey, it's good to see you today, and I think I, I saw you Sunday, but didn't get a chance to speak to you, and so Keith, it was good to see you and Miss Debbie, and uh, hey, I appreciate you tuning in today, Debbie Payne, hey Debbie, likewise, Debbie, good to see you, and I apologize if I didn't get a chance to speak to you guys on Sunday, uh, but it was great to see, and it's good to see you on here today, there's Patsy Bird, hey Patsy, watching from... Harmony, North Carolina. Patsy, welcome to Countdown. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Gwendolyn Pennington's watching from West Jefferson, North Carolina. Gwendolyn, welcome aboard. It's good to see you. Jennifer Burton. Hey, Jennifer, welcome back to the broadcast today. Thank you for tuning in on this Tuesday. Brother Mike Hill. Hey, Brother Mike. Brother Mike says, made it. Good, mate. You, you made it safe. Brother Mike, good to see you today. Hope you're having a great day today. Um, <laughs> Miss Judy Connor says, love the pink shirt. Okay, Miss Judy, let's clarify. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, what do they call this? This is not pink, all right? This is, um, and it's not purple either. What do they call it? Uh, is it lavender? Is that right, man? I don't, even, I don't know if that even sounds manly, but uh, anyway, thank you, Miss Judy. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I, I really appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, Jason Anderson. Hey, Jason. Good to see you watching from the beautiful state of New York. Uh, Jason, I hope you and the family are well and having a good day today. It's good to see you. Uh, Patty Johnson's watching today. Patty, welcome to Countdown. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Rose Blue is with us. Hey, Rose. Hope you and Rachel are having a blessed day today. What a blessing. Tawana Campbell is watching from down around Lexington, North Carolina, High, High Rock Lake. And um, Tawana, I hope you and Tony are having a great day today. Kevin Vandiver, hey Kevin, good to see you my friend. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. It's so good to see you. Well, listen, that's some of the ones that I can see. And uh, if I missed you today, I sure didn't mean to, but it's good to have you on Countdown to Courage. Thank you so much for for tuning in. Listen, do you have your Bibles at Ephesians chapter 4? We've been talking about growing in the Lord. We're talking about establishing a good, sound relationship with our Heavenly Father. We said several things. Number one, you must emerge in birth. There needs to be a new birth that takes place so the Holy Spirit can live inside of you and begin to make a change. We said number two, you must eat right. Spiritually speaking, you must eat right. Then we said this, number three, you must exercise. Now, all of those things are imperative if we're going to grow in the Lord. Now, I want to switch gears just a little bit today, if I could, and I want to talk about this subject. In spiritual growth, there ought to be some evidences. So let's talk about that word evidence a little bit today, if I could. Now, uh, Ephesians 4, verse 13, listen to what the Bible says uh, in Ephesians 4.13, the Apostle Paul said, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God um, unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Listen to verse 15. The Bible says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now, we're going to unpack this more in detail here in the uh, future broadcast, but basically the Bible is saying this, that these are some evidences 
of someone who is growing in the Lord. Now again, hang in there with us because maybe even by tomorrow we're going to start unpacking those verses that we just read for you today. But when it comes to spiritual growth, there ought to be some evidence. Now, listen to this countdown family. I believe this. I believe when it comes to spiritual growth that you all, that you and I ought to be setting some goals. We ought to know that we're growing in the Lord. There ought to be some evidences. We ought to be reaching some goals, which I believe is what Ephesians chapter four is pointing to right there. Now, let me give you something that I read about this thing of setting goals, and I thought it might help you and inspire you a little bit today. But I love what somebody said. Somebody said, why set goals? Top level athletes, successful business people, and achievers in all fields all set goals. Setting goals gives you long-term vision and also short-term motivation. It focuses your acquisition of knowledge and helps you to organize your time and your resources so that you can make the most of your life. Now, I love that. I love that. I think that you and I, as far as our spiritual growth is concerned, ought to be setting some goals. We ought to be setting some goals. I love, uh, uh, used to love to listen to Zig Ziglar and read some of his books. And Zig Ziglar said this. He said that if you and I aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. <laughs> and that's so true. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Now listen, folks, I'm going to tell you, that's where we are today. That's, that's the society and the generation that we're living in today. People that do not believe in setting any kind of goal. Um, and I believe this. I believe that we ought to be setting goals to be better. We ought to, we ought to set a goal to be a better Christian. We ought to set a goal to be a better spouse. We ought to set, her, set a goal to be a better parent. I ought to set a goal to be a better pastor, to be a better preacher. Man, I want to do better. I'm going to tell you what, I prayed that today. Uh, I pray that God speaks to me from his word and, 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 and gives me knowledge. But at the same time, you know what I do? Often I, I turn that around and I pray and I say, Lord, help me to communicate that knowledge in a better way. Man, sometimes I go back and I watch our services and I think, oh man, I want to do better. I need to do better. I need to do better in preaching. I need to do better in teaching. I need to do better in communicating those truths to the people of God. And so we ought to be, we ought to be setting goals. The child of God ought to have a goal to grow in the Lord. Listen, remember this. Remember, those of you who have children, remember when your children were small, and uh, they were and they were growing. You know what? They wanted evidence that they were growing. So you had a place in the kitchen. You had a place on the back porch. You had a place in the garage or or, or somewhere where you would put them against the wall or put them against the mold, the molding, and you would make a pencil line just above their head. And then a few days later, they would say, Mom, Dad, measure me. I want to see how much I've grown. And you would make another another notch. You all remember that? And, uh, and maybe month after month, they wanted you to make a mark where they, were, where they had grown to. They wanted to know that they were growing. And they would go back and look at those pencil marks to, to, to know that they were growing in the Lord. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You and I ought to be making some, if not physical, we ought to be making some spiritual or some mental pencil marks that we have grown in the Lord. We're talking about setting goals. I thought about this every time you go back to the doctor, regardless of the circumstances, you know what? The doctor always wants the nurse to weigh you. He, he always wants the nurse to measure you. Now, again, what's the idea? They're charting your growth. They're charting your growth. Uh, the doctor wants to know uh, whether to tell you to gain some weight or lose some weight. <laughs> Usually it's lose for me, Amen. And again, they're charting your growth. Now, again, I said that to say this, that you and I, spiritually speaking, we ought to be charting our growth. Uh, listen, if you've been saved for five years, you shouldn't be in the same place spiritually that you were five years ago. No, no, no. We ought to be growing. We ought to be growing. And there ought to be some evidences of that spiritual growth in our Christian life. And by the way, there are. There are some evidences. And I want to, Lord willing, I want to give you some of those. Now, we won't have time to do that today. 
But Lord willing, if God allows it, we'll unpack that a little bit more tomorrow on the broadcast. All right, so I hope that you will, I hope that you'll tune in. We just put our prayer helpline on the screen today, 704-327-5662. Listen, if you're enjoying the broadcast, be sure you let us know. Comment, let us know. Send us a letter. Uh, give us a call and let us know that you're enjoying the broadcast. Also, if you're watching this broadcast today, and you don't know for sure that you're on your way to heaven, listen, please call us. Call that number right now, 704-327-5662, and we would love to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you and how you can know that you're going to spend eternity in heaven. And then also, if you need prayer, well, listen, call us, and we would love to pray with you. If no one answers immediately, be sure that you leave a callback number so we can... uh, connect with you before too long. All right. Hey, Countdown family, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. I hope you had a great Tuesday and I hope this broadcast will make your Tuesday that much better. Listen, have a great day and God willing, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at this same time on Countdown to Courage. God bless and have a great day.